Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about careers and advancing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how can I advance my engineering career? And the short answer is you need to be a solid developer, you need to be a solid communicator, and you need to have an impact on people outside of your own work. Let me explain. So, if you thought that by simply going to all the boot camps, learning all the things about code and then becoming a master programmer and then simply coding away on your like one project, that's, that's going to be the thing that's going to progress your career. I'm going to say that it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. There are a few handful of developers out there who are in many people's eyes, absolute experts on pretty much everything. And they usually become public speakers, so they're still having an impact outside of their own work. It's very, very rare that you can spend your entire career just coding away on some specific problem and be considered to be, well, to, to progress your career. Because that's a little bit of a vague question. What do you mean by progressing your career? Because I have to make a few assumptions here, and I'm just going to assume that we're going to start at the junior level, right? So we're going to talk about, okay, you want to go from a junior level to where? Well, most people want to go to some type of, I'm not saying management position, but climbing the ladder for a software developer usually goes up a few routes. Now, usually the routes that you can go is, okay, you go a technical expert route. And even then these days, it's more common that you actually have to do quite a lot of things that are fairly social rather than it, maybe what you, you picture, which is that you're just this kind of super genius to sit in that corner and nobody like and everybody kind of respects you and they kind of you're like a legend of the office, right? Without having to talk to all that many people. That's simply not the way it works these days. But you can still go down that route, the technical expert route, and you can go down the route of a more traditional manager or a CTO or an architect or something like that, these higher positions that you usually have. Because usually the way it goes, if you want to progress upwards, is that you start out with something that I call impact, or that it's a very good term for this, like your impact when you work is first scoped to just you, just you. You're the only one, like you're not trusted with any decisions or any responsibilities that goes outside of your own work. Then you progress and you start having an impact on your team. The closest people around you, you start making decisions and setting up processes, a little bit of this sort of stuff. And then after a while, you progress up to a community level or a company level or something like that. You have multiple teams that might be depending on, on your work. And then the highest levels is when you work as a CTO or an architect or something like that, where you might have the responsibility of the entire company under you, where you basically are some type of go-between or some, you're in some way involved in pretty much all the work that is happening or all the planning out of work that is happening within one company. Now, the way to progress here is that the first level is you're a junior developer. You just started out. The first and foremost thing that you need to do is to get stable. And stable means that one part, you know the stack. You know the tools that the company is using and you know how to work with it. That's so important. That's the most important thing as a, in the beginning as a junior. You need to gain that stability to feel comfortable in the tooling that is being used. The second part is that you need to be stable and confident working within the domain, like the code base of the company. You need to learn how the system works. You need to be able to answer stakeholder questions. This is very, very important because the more knowledge you have about the system and how different features work and how different things are configured or different considerations, the better you're going to be prepared for the next step. And the next step is actually where you, as I was saying, you're going to go to team responsibility areas. Now, you cannot start taking decisions on behalf of the team or start helping out with work processes or things of that nature without first having a fairly good understanding of how the people that you work with, how they work as individuals and how the different stakeholders are working, like how the company kind of works or how the system works. Because when you go up to a team responsibility area, you're usually going to be involved earlier in the stages of the software development cycle. In the first stage, you're basically just involved at, all right, 
they're going to ask you how long is it going to take you to build this thing and then you say this amount of time and then you build it that's your that's the whole deal right the next step is that you're actually involved in estimating the total like the work for more people than yourself where you might be saying that okay we're going to need to think about these things that, and we're going to have to implement these things and we're probably going to split these stories or we're going to group these pieces of work in this fashion you're actually planning out work for more people than yourself and setting up processes that will actually increase the development velocity of all the people in your company or well in your team at least so in order for you to be able to answer all of these different questions you actually already need to know how the system works because otherwise you won't be able to give much feedback if your stakeholder comes in and says all right, we're gonna to have to start working on this project here. How long is that gonna take and what do we need to think about? And you kind of sit there, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, pro, uh, don't really know. And then, then you're useless, pretty much, you, because you have no experience with how to do this. So that's the next step. That's why, that's why the first part is so important. You really need to learn how your coworkers work and how the system works in order to, to progress to the team impact level. And the thing to focus on here is number one, you need to take, have that, you need to raise your eyes just a little bit above your monitor and start thinking about, okay, so how, what things can I do here to make sure that we deliver on time, that everybody feels like they're committed to the code base, and that everybody feels like there's this a place, pleasant work environment, and make sure that we consistently execute as quickly as humanly possible and how do we maintain like how do we make sure that we don't go too light on testing how do i make sure that we have a strategy for dealing with bugs and things of this nature i uh, i could go through all of this with you but the, like there's multiple videos that has to take place for me to give you tips on all of this but i we can do that as well but that, those are the sorts of things that you should be focusing on. How can I make this team as productive and happy as humanly possible? Now, the next step is, okay, so now you're going to have inter-team communication or you're going to have responsibility maybe at the entire company level. It depends on how quickly you're going to progress. But this is, if, not, if this is not the final stage, it's going to be one of the higher stages. And usually it, you can think of this as the final stage because anything above this is usually that you're going to be involved in a very similar sort of fashion. It's just that your work process is going to look different, a little bit different, and you're going to have more responsibility. But let's say for the sake of argument that this is going to be the last stage for you. You're going to progress up to company impact. Now the, now you're basically an architect or a CTO or something like that. So now, in order for you to be able to do this sort of, uh, to do this sort of work, you need to have a very good understanding of the company itself. How does this company do business? Where are we ga getting our money from? How, what are our customer requirements? What are the needs of our customers? What are the limitations? Like are there legal aspects, security aspects? And all of these type of risk management things you need to start being good, you need to be fairly good at. Now, this ties in again to how good are you at understanding how the system actually works because that's going to help you understand what's the right decision because you need two perspectives here. So you need the business perspective and you need the technical perspective to be able to join these two and see, oh, this is the overlap. This is what we need to do in order to make, take the next step for this company. And then you're going to have to be involved in the coaching of individuals and of the entire team. You're most likely going to have to focus, uh, you're going to have to get fairly good at doing presentations, setting up work processes for companies or policies or things of this nature, and motivating, like to get people excited about this sort of, sort of stuff, to make them buy into the whole thing. Because trust me when I say this, if you're a manager and you think that by just writing something down on a piece of paper in, I don't know, Confluence or Jira or whatever, that that's just gonna magically make every person on in your company follow along and just do the thing that you, you want them to do, that's very naive. It takes a lot of work to align an entire company of people. And this is something that you need to get really fucking good at. It helps. This is just me saying my personal experience here. It doesn't have to be this, this way, but it helps a lot if you are already a little bit of a name within the company. If you are considered to be a fairly good software and like a very a good a good software engineer, a good engineer, and you can speak the lingo, you can relate to the people who are doing the work they will more likely follow you 
if you're a bit charisma, if you have a bit of charisma, as I said, you need to work on your soft skills. Soft skills are like uh, organizational skills and planning skills and soft skills are like everything if you want to progress to this level. You need to have a good understanding of engineering still, but th these are your main focus areas. They should be your main focus areas. Because as, you're, as I was saying, more, more of what you do is planning and consulting with the business to make good tech decisions and then setting up uh, uh, work plans or roadmaps and things of this nature and then coaching the teams so that these things actually get into place in the way like you're respond you're the peak of the pyramid you're responsible for making sure that everybody else knows what they're supposed to be doing and that they know what the vision is and that they understand why we're we doing this and how we're supposed to be doing this so what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to progress your career as a software engineer, usually the way you do this is that you start at the bottom as a junior developer, you get stable as a developer, then you progress to a team lead type of position or some type of, you don't have to have an official position, but you take more responsibility, which usually starts with that you have an impact on the team and the work processes. This is where you need to f start learning about soft skills and planning and having a higher level perspective of how can I make myself and my team more productive and happy. And then the last stage or one of the last stages is that you go up to an architect level or, a, or some type of influencer level or a CTO level where you're basically f going to have to be so intimate with the company and the business and the industry that you are working within that you know what the requirements are for the different customers and what their needs are and what the future is going to hold and how to tie that into your own tech stack and how then to execute all of these decisions that you need to be part of and communicate all of this in a good fashion to the people that are working within the company, to the different teams. And then you need to be able to support them and coach them so that they have answers to their questions. These steps are usually the steps that you need to take in order to reach the highest levels of software engineering. Have a great day.